Yeah, you do, but it is up. Um, this, year, this is Intel 362. Staying for you, I actually have the um, AMT's Diamond Rio kit, as you can tell. Uh, I actually started to make this to the front engine mount to now, which is the transmission loop, the transmission support. Um, so what I'm doing is, uh, for this, I'm just showing you the actual kit. So you know, this is what's up. Um, the kit itself is basically uh, detailed. Um, other thing is that I like about this is a vintage kit. Something I've been teetering on about, um, Believe it or not, I was actually going to uh, do a retrofit, which I was going to make it with the original kit. Um, of course, in the back here, it's the Sinclair fuel truck. That's for another project at a later time. Uh, so right now, I was going to actually run these type of rims rather than the uh, the actual <laughs> the actual um, uh, kit, the other kit rims that came with it. But um, that's all I've been trying to do, or try to go vintage, but... Um, as you can tell, I got some Kenworth T600A gas tanks I may use in uh, later into the video. Um, so basically, that's the uh, the gist of it there. Uh, I have to find your tank, but there's two tanks to this kit. Um, so everything else you see here was all going to be a retrofit for another uh, project. So I'm going to put these off to the side, debate on that later for the Chrome. And uh, therefore, there's going to be some other things that will come up. In future videos, whether if I would decide to go to um, a more updated version or do a classic version of the kit uh, of the truck. So, like I said, uh, there's some parts here. I mean, there's the instructions to, to build it, all the detail parts tree. Um, everything else here is still in the plastic. I didn't really have time. And then this is the actual, um, the run of the mill basic instructions. They have the vintage rims, actually what they used to run on the old Diamond Rio trucks. Um, so this here is a reference guide. I mean, right now, it's like I said, I started doing this about an hour ago. Uh, so I'm going to actually get to work getting the frame together, possibly get it done tonight, maybe, hopefully. Um, as you can tell, I actually had a toothpick in here. Uh, I don't know where it went off to. Uh, actually, it's right here. Um, <laughs> so anyways, I got to keep this here for a reason. I do not have the um, the top cover, so as you can tell, very good kit, detailed, a little bit, not too, you know, not really not too shabby. It's actually a good kit. Um, so right now we're going to get to work on doing the frame. Unfortunately, I don't have my shop cat with me, uh, which she would actually jump on here in the oil tank, uh, but um, that will be for a later time. So as you can tell... I am actually going to begin the um, finishing off over here. Try to do as much as I can tonight. I'm going to get the rear transmission support. Um, basically, uh, uh, parts are basically self-explanatory. Uh, sometimes they fit. Sometimes they don't. Uh, it depends on how these kits are normally built. So right now, we're going to be working on the intermediate cross member, um, which is going to be parts... 49 and there's only two pieces so it's parts 49 <clears throat> so basically that piece is going to go right here where my thumb is and that little uh groove right there uh, we're not talking about disco either um so anyways we're just going to start cutting this out uh i just actually have this here for now i'm going to put this other rail over here but i do need to get to this little section and I need to look at the instructions so I don't goof it up and do it the wrong way. Uh, the first time I've actually built the model kit was uh, actually just that. So I'm just gonna take these little old beat up worn torn uh, plastic colors which actually got me um, through a lot. You can tell how exactly worn these things are uh, from years of cutting plastic and a little bit of metal a little bit of wiring and stuff like that. So now I'm going to begin cutting these off. It's important. Um, there's a way to set these up because actually on this particular uh, cross member right here, I want to show briefly the difference. Um, older trucks, 
used to have a uh, indentation, a clearance. Um, so basically, these type of trucks, uh, they had clearance for the drive shafts would actually go in between. Um, newer trucks, however, don't really necessarily have that. It's just a big uh, solid piece, which actually would look like this. So both of them would be like on a solid. Uh, older trucks, which is pretty cool. I don't have to worry about too, too much uh, on that sort of thing. So I just got to cut this other section and I got to start, well, not welding, but getting this part on. But uh, what I usually do is I make sure I keep that piece. I'll let you see it for a moment. <clears throat> so you see that piece right there. Uh, that's paint, so you don't have to worry about it. So I'm just cutting these off. Doing the best I can to get the uh, the actual uh, sprue uh, situated. I'm going to leave that there for a moment because I'm going to actually have to hijack this frame for just a brief moment. And I'm going to set it down. I usually do the best I can to lay it on its side. Uh, hopefully uh, there's something there that can be anything too, too bad. And I'm going to put the cab there so we don't have the cab in the way when I'm getting the frame together. And always, like, if you have anything, uh, you make sure you use, like, a, a good sand film for the uh, for the sprue. Um, use a little bit of an executive blade if you need to to shave off some of the sprue, but don't shave too much where you gouge the plastic. So, basically, um, I've always been fine. Let me get this net here real quick. Okay, anyways, um, net killed. The good net. Um, anyway, so basically what I'm doing is I'm scraping off a little bit. I'm not going to do too much of a scrape because I don't want to gouge the plastic. Uh, important, you don't gouge the plastic because then it'll look like a Frankenstein if you uh, do that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a little sand and make sure you sand wherever you scraped off. I generally do this. Um, I do the best I can to sand it down to a point. Uh, make sure I get it down as much as I possibly can. And if you have any vacuum forms or vacuum uh, puncture holes that are inside the plastic, kind of like that, do the best you can to get them out. If not, um, you can always leave them in there glued. But I do the best I can to get them out. Um, I have that issue with the manufacturer thing. Uh, this particular vehicle, i um, been sitting on the fence between the two if I want to go a kind of a retrofit or I might go as a traditional classic um a traditional classic uh, version. Um, I will know more as soon as I get the whole frame built and everything else together. Uh, what's nice about um, these type of truck kits, especially in real life, if you ever seen these in truck shows, uh, if there's any Diamond Rios that do come out in truck shows um, and you see them, they some of them have the Cummings. Um, I've seen one guy who actually had uh not a diamond rio but an older model of a oil car he actually put a cat engine in it um but that was a long time ago and as you can tell what i'm doing is i'm going to take a little bit here and believe it or not i'm actually going to just take this little vacuum line this like little thing here at the manufacturer leave behind um that little part right there that's going to come out or i'm going to do the best i can to scrape it out and sand it out and uh, hopefully i can do that I normally would use a file. Uh, unfortunately, um, I do not have my file at hand. And if I do, it's probably going to be buried in this mess somewhere and I'm not going to go through it. It's too much and I don't want to be, um, I really don't want to be going through all that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the X-Acto blade. Uh, considering the fact that this X-Acto blade has been on here um, since I've been working on other, uh, I don't know, maybe about 50 other models I've been working on over the course of time of my life. So I'm going to do the best I can here to uh, scrape away uh, a little bit. I know you have to kind of part of my handle uh, a bit, but I will show you exactly the fact that I'm actually going to start sanding uh, this little piece right here now, since you can tell it's been somewhat removed. So I'm going to start sanding this out uh, as much as I possibly can. Um, so Usually, like, I always try to make these truck kits look pristine. Uh, I had an auto car dump, dumper, actually. I actually started, um, I, well, I shouldn't say started. I actually made it into a workhorse, but made it one where it was, like, kind of old and, uh, kind of old and rotty, sort of. 
Uh, it was an old technique, but I don't really uh, do very much of those. Um, so as you can tell, I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to sand this down like I did with this piece and so on and so forth. <clears throat> um, basically, what I'm trying to do is try to get this look nice. Um, I haven't really entered any model contest. And believe it or not, I had somebody ask me once about re-entering another model contest with building a 125th scale truck kit. Um, I haven't done so in probably... I think the last time I entered into a model contest was in 1998. So I don't have to sand too hard because I'm going to go very lightly and use enough glue. Um, as you can tell, this is my magical um, glue stick of happiness. Well, not really glue stick of happiness, but my plug for my tester's rubber cement so the cement doesn't dry up. And you don't have problems later on and you don't have to poke it with knives and stuff like that. Uh, that's one key factor you don't want to do. Over that schmeck on the nozzle there. Then I'm going to begin uh, gluing. I'll let you guys take a look here. Uh, so I'm not like doing a photo bomb or and or hog. I'm just doing enough to actually glue a little bit onto this cross member, which is actually the intermediate cross member. So what I'm going to do is while this is going to set, I do the best I can to line this up evenly. And I don't make my, so I don't glue my fingers in and or other appendages that may be in the way of things. So I'm going to make sure this is all evened out. However, it's going to go into that little uh, spot here. So that's the next part. And I actually have built these kits before um, and over the time. So I'm just going to glue one side in. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be uh, playing any music on YouTube because the algorithm's here. Okay, so, okay, yeah. And welcome, John uh, John Kloss. Welcome to the channel. And it's awesome. Yes, the kit. I actually, I've been putting this off. I ordered it off Amazon, but I've been putting this kit off. Eventually, it will be built as a construction vehicle. It will be in a... Uh, It'll be into, um, basically what's happening is that this kit's going to be built um, into a construction vehicle with the low boy and the, uh, I believe it's the AMT D900 uh, bulldozer kit. Um, as you can tell right now, I'm actually uh, just mounted this cross member in, the mid cross member. I want to get as much as I can get done with the frame, at least get the main structures tonight onto the frame, hopefully the next time around, I will probably have the other side, which will actually sit in. Hopefully, if I did this right, um, we will have this frame basically built in like that. Hopefully, um, there should be no runs or, you know, like no problems, nothing like that. Sorry. But I want to say, uh, you know, awesome to see uh, John. Uh, forgive me if I butcher your name, John. John Kloss, John, um, yeah, John Kloss. So anyways, um, want to, you know, see where everybody's at these kits. Um, let me know where you're at these, uh, building up the kit itself. If you just started it, um, okay. So I'm sorry if I butcher your name, John, uh, John Kloss. So, uh, it's nice to see you on the channel. Welcome to the channel. Um, so basically, the kit uh, is a fun kit. I just, like I said, I've been putting it off. It's a, uh, it's an interesting kit. You know, first time, probably in a long time building a truck kit. Um, this one, I'm not even 100% sure. I'm actually going to be sitting onto that frame. Um, okay, so welcome to the channel, John. Um, so anyways, yes, this is a kit. I've actually, like I said, this is not my first time building a truck kit. Um, I've actually built from a Renault to a Kenworth. Actually, you could tell <laughs> way in the back over here. I won't show it because it's all nothing there now. But um, I, have a, I have spare parts of trucks. Um, I got a GMC. I got spare parts of, well, actually junkyard of a GMC General, a Kanepa Kenworth. And then, of course, over here, really quick, 
I do have a 148 scale Sin um, Atlantis Sinclair white truck, which eventually I will be building in the later on in the streams. Hopefully, keep my fingers crossed. <clears throat> um, so basically, that's just how that's going to go. Um, so where I'm going to now is uh, see how much I can get done with the frame. And not bad for a kit that's like about $48, $50. Um, it was a toss-up between this kit and the um, the Kenworth uh, tow truck, the wrecker that actually hauls the uh, the big rigs. Um, not bad. I mean, this kit I got off Amazon for, you know, like $48, $50. But as you can tell now, I'm working on this piece, which is actually going to be... The rear cross member. Um, this is an important part of the frame because you don't want to look like tweak and look like spaghetti. Um, but I want to welcome to those who are watching to the channel. The funny thing I, I realized about some of these truck kits, the older trucks. Now, back in the day, uh, I'll give you a brief, brief history here. Um, there was a reason why I ended up looking for this Diamond Rio kit is when I was actually the... Um, an oil mechanic, you know, back then female oil mechanics were kind of, um, they were slowly coming into the field. Uh, there was a junkyard uh, across the street from where I used to work, my old job. So one day uh, there was a thing where the, they had a diamond Rio. What year? I don't know. It could have been this same year. Um, and for a long time, I wanted to find a model kit that was a diamond Rio kit. Well, originally when VLS, um, I used to order, my, well, I ordered a couple model kits from VLS at the time. And uh, they actually had in the uh, catalog of a Diamond Rio kit. I believe it was the same one. And um, basically, I kept putting it off. I wasn't sure if I was going to buy it or anything like that. So I put it up for so long, and, and I'm sorry I did. And then I was able, uh, with luck have it, uh, I was able to get a hold of this kit. Um, normally, I've been wanting to build a kit like this. This is actually one of those things I wanted to build um, for that said reason. So now, uh, now I have it. I'm building it, and hopefully I can make something, you know, give it like some kind of good justice here. Like I said, I'm just starting to build the frame up. I just started building it today. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve off a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit off of the sprue on the rear cross member. And uh, hopefully make sure everything's there. Do my magic trick of the sandpaper 101. Um, actually, this type of sandpaper, it's not coarse. You don't want to go coarse on this. I'm actually running a 400, uh, 400 uh, C. 447C grit uh, for the sanding, for the sanding film. Don't go too heavy. If you make it too coarse, it's going to, you know. I don't go with coarse uh, sandpaper for the uh, for this type of kit because I want to give it a very um, nice, unique look, not to ruin detail. You don't want to do any of that sort of thing. Uh, so as you can tell, I'm going to actually just slightly sand this down a little bit. Just make sure that when you sand it, make sure you get off all the, the excess sprue. Um, don't um, leave any sprue because if you build it, you don't sand it lightly or anything like that, it'll look like a disaster. And you really don't want that uh, to happen, especially if you're going to make it look nice or you're just going to make it there for uh, show and or display. Um, so I just do a little bit of a light sanding on the sprue. So basically that's how you're doing it up. Um, just make sure you do the best you can. You don't have to go like completely nuts. Uh, there's some guys out there who are just like really competitive. They'll just go nuts and sand everything up. But let's see what's in here. At what? I got mine. So let me see what John Classic put down here for a moment. Um, got mine. Um, at... Really? Yeah, I ended up paying like 50 something dollars for it, um, for this kit. But the problem was the hobby shop I ordered it from, uh, they only had one of these left. It was only one left. Um, 
I mean, twenty dollars isn't that bad. I mean, you can get it cheap somewhere else <coughs> versus um versus an actual uh, retail um where I got it from. Anyways, I got it off Amazon and they were really good. <coughs> so, as you can tell, now here's a, a catch twenty two, which some people seem to um now. If any of you have not built a semi truck, a semi mile kit, uh, first time to do is just get a snap on kit. That's a recommendation. I would actually, anybody who's going to be a first time truck builder, um, those who are veteran truck builders, would actually know the full deal here. Now, on the cross member, this is what you got to pay very close attention to. <clears throat> um, now, this is the the uh, the, tran the, um, the front cab mount. These are normally placed the way they indicate is over here. Uh, so this basically will actually go to, if I grab one part of the frame, you can look. There's a little notch, and that was going to be somewhere either here or over here. There's a sleeper to this kit, so you want to be cognizant of how you set that up. Um, and that will be keyword here. Uh, you want to test fit before you do anything. Me, uh, I've actually built frames, truck frames. Um, I've actually done custom work for a friend of mine um, a long time ago. But if you look very carefully, do um, because you got this little bump right here. Now, on the instructions, it's going to indicate that you go this way with it, and then you have to put the little, the little downward bump. I like to call it a speed bump. This way up onto the frame. So it's got to go like that. You don't want it to um, be any more than that, only because that's where your little trailer hitch will go to the carriage. I mean, if you do it straight, hey, you knock yourself out, it'll just look really weird. Hmm? Truck hit? Yeah, truck hits are no joke. Um, I've actually been to a, an actual contest. There's some guys who were freaking hard up on on a lot of truck building uh, kits. And I've seen some go beyond over detail. Um, I mean, we're talking about putting airlines in, running brakes, running. I mean, you can name it. And you would have the truck kits will be fully detailed. Uh, there was a guy out in Staten Island a long time ago at the Igor Sikorsky IPMS chapter who actually fully went ballistic, detailed the, the airlines to the compressor things i mean the whole nine yards this guy was like freaking gone ain't nuts he even made the uh the cab have workable lights uh stuff like that and it's you know it's quite something so now i'm actually gonna start adding the rear member um like i said you want to take your time building these kits you no need to rush it if you rush a mile kit like this and you skip anything it'll look like complete utter junkify and it would suck to actually do anything other than trying to take it apart and at that point it'll be a nightmare um make sure you do it once make sure you do it good and if you get any leftover like if you get like a little bit of a, a glue schmeg right there as like i do take something maybe like a, a little bit of like a plastic bag and um do the best you can here to clean it up so you don't have to worry too much. Um, this truck, uh, this particular kit in general, I am actually making as a show truck. Uh, hopefully I might get back into the mile contest again. But make sure to do the best you can to keep this rear cross member. It's vital to do keep this as straight as possible. Don't let it sag down because it'll look like uh, complete mishiva. And you don't want to have that problem. So just make sure you keep that there. Uh, make sure you have this. This little hump here facing down this way so you don't have any problems because that's where your drive shaft is going to go through. Um, some trucks you can get away. They're a little bit more forgiving. But other than that, you don't want to like really screw around with a fifth wheel kit, which I actually take these trucks very seriously in the heart. Um, and then used to be a Mack truck. Um, believe it or not, up in uh, north, of, north of a bit of ways here, um, there was a truck museum, uh, which I believe was closed down just recent, um, or a long time ago. And I was going to go there. I never did. 
But now we got the rear cross member mounted. So now we have to look for this piece. Part 47, which is the rear transmission support, which has to be facing downwards to the ground. You don't want to have it going upwards because it'll look kind of really funny. You might look, make it look like a Van Gogh or a Picasso. Um, <laughs> but anyways, you, you want to make sure that this piece is facing downward. Make sure it's going to the ground because that's important and that's key vital. Um, that's what the transmission mount. Uh, everybody knows the transmission it has to be mounted in a certain way. Um, some, of the, some of you who actually are very well aware of the uh, the common classic trucks would know what I'm talking about there. Um, funny thing is, I actually have a schoolie, but that's a Freightliner, um, which will be converted into a home, which I'll never, at some point I will show that part, but that's going to be a long ways down the road. Um, I'm doing like a multi-stream thing here. So I have another channel, but that's not solely based on to what I'm doing here. The YouTube channel I am actually doing uh, for this is going to be actually legitly for the model truck kits. Uh, for those who are truck enthusiasts. I was doing a gaming channel on this channel. So if you see like old videos of me video gaming or whatever the case may be. Those are older videos when I first started on YouTube, so pay no mind to them. <laughs> but we're going to begin a whole new now on this channel, strictly on the building models part. Um, trying to uh, basically extend my horizons out here. But going back to the cross member at hand, um, also pay attention to how this is set. Um, you see how the indentation, this piece has to go in. This piece has to go out. Um, so basically, that's a key indentation there. You're going to be like, well, why does that matter? Well, it matters because in the in actual reality of it all, uh, sometimes you want to make it fit all proper. You don't want to, like like I said, you don't want to make it look like a Picasso because then at that point, you just really screwed the pooch there. Um, so basically, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mount this to that little spot if I can keep the directions from flopping around here if you know what i mean uh so basically i'm just going to take the magical corker out which keeps everything in there the glue so it doesn't freeze over and i don't have to go through the the problem here and that kind of mess and i just don't want to deal with messes i'm trying to be very thorough when it comes down to stuff like this this i don't have to worry about saying too too much but just enough here to see um so let's see if I remember right. If I'm reading this right, it looks like this is actually going to be fitted. Let me just go. Hold on. Let me just test fit it real quick. I might have this in a spot I may not want to be in. We don't want it to look like, like I said, Picasso. So it looks like that piece, if I can get it to sit. Okay, I see where it goes. So it's got, whoops, we don't want to lose that piece. Good thing I caught it. Um, so we want to make sure it's lined up to that part of the cross member. And hopefully that it should be where it is. But what sucks about this type of indication, there's no, there's really no given aspect to why, you know, whether if it's going to go that way or it hangs down. Uh, this is a really bizarre kind of mount, but I think this will have to be more mounted to the frame. So I think what I'm going to do is not glue this permanent because I don't know exactly where this is going to go. Um, that's a problem in itself. I wish they were a little bit more specific in exactly how this is mounted. Um, so I'm going to hold off until I know for sure where it goes. Uh, so I'm not going to really, I was going to mount it in here, but I'm looking at the indication and they don't really specify very well to how that's supposed to get mounted, um, which is very disheartening. And so, therefore, I'm going to hold off. Uh, so, what I'm going to do while that's there, I'm going to put some tape because I don't know where it's going to go. So, I'm going to use that. So, okay, I built seven truck kits so far. Yeah, you know, I've actually done a lot of truck kits, but this is a very odd one. Um, to answer that question right there, yeah, this is a very odd kit because this is actually the, um, for a rear transmission support, I would actually put this on the transmission itself only to save 
myself the aggravation and or the headaches, um, which I rather do. No, they don't specify, and that's the thing that bothers me. And, you know, it's kind of like this kit right here, um, my fingers on, the Blade Baker kit. That was an issue on its own. I actually stopped building it in my last uh, YouTube, and I'm actually going to use painter's tape to mount this back in here so I don't lose it. So I'm going to be smart, and I'm going to actually mount it there because I'm not going to bother with it. I'm not going to kill myself over it, but, and I don't want to keep that back there for the moment. So what I'm going to do right now, uh, just to be on a word of caution, <clears throat> for now I'm going to start mounting this part, even though I got uh, these two here just freshly glued in. I think these are going to be glued really well, so I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to run with what I have right now, mount this part in to save my aggravation headache for a later time. I'll worry about the mount here that I actually got taped here so i'm gonna worry about that later um so it, here's a trick that most um people or some people that build truck kits um i actually use painter tapes to get painters tape you can get from um this is actually a three a 3m painters tape uh, i would actually recommend this kind of size just for the sake of argument so you don't have to really do very um you don't have to worry about holding it. You stand, you know, sit there and hold it while you're doing it. So, anyways, I'm gonna actually just get this part of the frame on, and then mount it in there, and then we'll just use a little tape. I always make sure I have this on hand. If not, I go with Plan B, which is kind of weird, but I won't get into the weirdies of Plan B here. So, what I'm gonna do is I'll start gluing in these frames, these rails here. Oh, and before I glue it. Just a little heads up here. If you're wondering how to really do this front section here, this front engine mount, uh, on this kit, you want to make sure it's key indication that this little indentation is facing towards you. It's very self-explanatory because you can't miss the little pattern cuts they did here for that. So always pay attention to that. Don't try to reverse it. Don't try to modify it. You know how come it's not fitting. Always remember to look at that indication here for the frame. And also in here, some truck hits are going to have it. So always pay a key indication to that. Just a little side note. So I'm going to actually begin the, uh, the process of marrying the frame together. And hopefully I can get that together. And hopefully I can let it sit for about a few hours here and there. <sighs> With a little bit of a saving grace power, you know. Uh, sometimes when in doubt, you have to give it a little bit of a, a kick in the ass. And there you go. It's a little bit much, but I'll run with it. Too much is never enough, but I think I'm going to go, I think it's been a little over, uh, going a little bit too uh, happy over here. So I'm actually going to take a little bit from the glue I have here, get a little resourceful if I need to. Um, so I'm basically going to just run a little bit of a zappity zap. And just kind of get a little bit there, just see how much I can get done up and then I'll use the actual uh, glue part. I'm gonna make sure you get this on good enough to where it's not gonna come apart and all your hard work doesn't go for not. So yeah, the only thing I do dread about building sometimes on model kits, especially truck kits, is marrying, or the part I love is building the frame. The hard part is, or the part I dread the most is actually keeping the frame together. Um, and I've done it. I've been good about it. I've been, I've been really, really good. But let's grab a little bit here. Put this down here a little bit to keep the weight down for the tape. And then this way I can focus on getting this together. And we can get this uh, frame together here to say I do. Hopefully it's not I don't. And it's not like you're going to be, you know, it's not like you're going to get married and heaven forbid you wake up to something you don't wake up next to. But uh, that's a different story in its own. I mean, how, I mean, that's happened to me. Well, sort of, kind of, but not entirely. So what I'm going to do is going to get everything together. Make sure that the rear cross member, the last part of it is always the rear cross member. Make sure you get all this lined up. And what I'm going to do, my holly jelly butt is now going to take a little bit of a blue painter's tape. 
in spots. You don't have to go nuts. You don't have to go crazy, but you can just do this very carefully and not tweak the frame. I usually put one solely for the sake of it um, between this part here, the rear and the, uh, what was there? The rear and the, what was that piece I call it a lot? Oh yeah, the intermediate. So I wanna go between the rear and the intermediate, make sure it's on good, make sure you snug it up like a bug in a rug. And if one comes undone, you can always go back and fix it. So that's basically what I do is I get one started. Now I'll go to the front here and uh, make sure that that's all together so we don't have no poppies, if you know what I mean, no, uh, no pop outs, no surprises, no jack in the boxes. Um, so that's just the basic gist of it here. Um, so I'm gonna just kind of get this little bad boy or up, up and around. And by the way, to get the painter's tape, you can go to Home Depot, uh, Lowe's, make sure you get the right one. It's appropriate for the frame. But as you can tell, I am actually giving a little bit of slack there uh, just just because of my own reason. But I usually put like another third, but I'm going to run another tape across on top here so this doesn't kind of go uh, springing and, and uh, dinging uh, in a way, I guess some... I'm going to wonder what the hell is springing, springing in a dinging, but that's just my little, uh, well, my little niche stay, say sometimes, but uh, I just do the best I can to keep this together so the frame doesn't pop during time of the, um, the drying process. But since the glue is strong enough and potent, it may adhere to this a little bit quicker, um, but I don't want to get... Uh, too ahead of myself because every time I do that, uh, well, needless to say, accidents do happen, and you don't want those accidents to said happen. But I am putting one here where the actual other crust member would be set. So right now, this is basically what you're seeing here. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a jerry rig kind of thing, but just to keep it there so the frame doesn't fall apart uh, during the process. So, um, so as you can tell. This is how you want to have your frame built. Just picture it without the tape here, but just picture the whole frame already done, all the glues dry, no tape here. Just picture it the way it should be. Make sure that, you know, this is how it would look in the basic uh, gist from top. Well, picture it not there, you know, but just picture the cross member there. Um, the engine, actually, sorry, the engine mount here, and you have your mid rear and then you have your transmission support so this is how the frame should look um so you don't like have to kill yourself looking at how to videos and people showing you something that's really like a fast forward motion and you know the ass nine crap they always do uh in building kits and they never explain crap to you because you know they want you to figure this out on your own but you know I, if you learn it from me and you watch how it's done you'll see exactly how it's supposed to be done Legitly and seriously. So right now, <laughs> I'm going to keep that here to, to basically dry. I mean, I can actually mount the cross member, uh, actually the cab part of it. Uh, however, I want to make sure the whole frame is set. But I probably will add that to it. Um, and I probably should. There's two mounts, actually, just two. So we have a rear cab mount, which go actually would go to the sleeper where my finger's pointing. Here, I'll show you closer. So there, there's a rear cab mount, which will go there into those little, little uh, nooks, which are right here. So that's where the rear cab mount will go. And then uh, over here, that will go right here. So you know what? I'll go a little bit further. I'll push the envelope just a little bit, but not too much because I don't want to like make myself look big. You know, a botch job later on the, the process. But that one with the mount, I will not do until I actually have a, no, a better knowledge to where that's going to go. So I'm just going to take a little bit of here on this uh, cab member um, and uh, basically make sure to give a go over, you know, clean up a little bit of sprue. We'll get that on there. We'll get the, the two cab mounts on to the frame and we'll call it good right there. Um, so basically, what I'm normally, it's like I did before, 
you know, I'm just going to take a little bit of sprue, not too much. Like I said, you don't want to gouge it. You don't want to make it look awful. Um, sometimes people who are truck collectors want it kind of like in a way, you know, make it look nice, make it look elegant, sleek, whatever the case may be. Um, so basically, like I said before, make sure you sand down areas that um, are going to be noticeable because if you see, anybody sees like sprue, uh, like access um, plastic, well, then it becomes a problem, and then therefore you've got to go and try to sand it down, even though you already did the hard work and paint and all that fun stuff. It's a mess. But I got to be honest about this, you know, I've been working on them all the time, um, but I will uh, show a bit of a collection of my trucks. Um, I will show that uh, right at the end of the video. So I'm just only going to run a little bit on the stream a little longer, and I will show you the uh, thing here, the, the actual truck. So this is how you know, that little clip, and then you put it that way, and that's how where it will go. It's going to go in something like that. So basically, you're going to have that little frame there. So the reason why they did that, though, actually was the fact um, if anything happened to the transmission, if it fell, it would fall in here. But as far as everything else, you had always that little support there. That was a good thing about it. So these will go here and then the, the back over there. And nothing too much over in the back because that's where everything else will go. So I'm just going to get this together here a little bit. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Something a little different. So Actually, I'm going to do this here. I'm going to get this little bad boy right here. Slide that back a little bit. And then uh, get these little pinholes basically glued in into this little part here. Just enough to keep it there and steady and happy and make it look like a little uh, happy camper, if you know what I mean. We don't want no unhappy campers, you know what I mean here? So make sure it's all nicey nice. And we just keep that there. Okay, we got that. Let me just make sure that this is all. Okay, so that looks like it's just about even. Uh, it may look a bit even, it may look a little off, but you know what? And the long gist of it, it'll you know what it looks crooked is the tapes on there and that's why you do that it's like they you know it's kind of bizarre my perception isn't all that good but i managed somehow to make it all look good don't ask me how i think it's a curse and a blessing in its own so i'm just gonna get now for the rear cab mount and I just cut that bad boy right off and hopefully we can get um and put that off to the side for now, but this is the last part that will go to the frame. But I will show you some little little trucks here, you know, like the other trucks I've actually built in the past. Um, there's a few, but some of them didn't make it through my moving during the time. So uh, I'm just going to actually do this real quick. Get a little bit here. Now the fun part. I get to sand this all over again. <sighs> just got to keep that all together there, and we're good. Um... So anyways, I'm just going to do a little bit of a sanding on the, the rear cross member a little bit, both front and back, and hopefully that we can get this together. Uh, I, I want to get the main part together and then worry about everything else uh, shortly afterwards. Um, I don't want to go too nuts. I don't want to go... Um, I don't want to put the whole frame together because there's some things I do want to do to this frame. Uh, a bit of a customization, um, hopefully... Um, man, I'm putting some chrome tanks on here and make it all badass looking or some shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, kind of get everything kind of like customizable <laughs> and many parts and options too. Um, so yeah, I'll just sand this down a little bit the best I can. Let's see if I can at least sand a little bit in the front, like the fronts here, like this piece, these right here and a little bit over here. I'm not going to go too heavy, but just make sure there's enough there to kind of get that whole thing all set up. 
Um, <clears throat> so basically, I'm just doing a very light sanding. Kind of making sure it's all the sprue, anything that's kind of not there, or you never know. Because when you spray things, you, you're going to see things are going to be noticeable when you start spraying things. You don't want to have that problem. You really don't want that. And for me, I sure shit don't want that problem. <laughs> so, um, so now I don't have those blocks. So that's a good thing. Um, if I did, I think there would be a problem. Gee, I like the decoration. Oh, was that a new decal? Glue? Shit. How about how about painter's tape with a little freaking uh, glue on the side, huh? I forgot to do one little thing, and I forgot to clean up the inside over here for the moment. So now, now with the tape not in the way, which is fine. That's perfectly good. I'm just gonna put the glue up on these little these little points right here, and it's gonna sit. And we're gonna leave it alone, and I'll show you the truck collection I actually have along the other way. Um, so basically, that's just the gist of it. <laughs> so, anywho, um, I'm gonna actually get if I can, if I can pop the. Oh yeah, this is gonna be another explosive uh, thing here that I may not even like, but I'll do the best I can. Just enough glue there to. Well, it'll have to do, hopefully, if I don't do this the wrong way. I think I'll use the over overbearing side here and just melt that bad boy right into there. We should be good. Um, frame's going to be a little cockeyed for a bit, but it'll be fine. Yeah, that's one thing I hate about the tooling design. Sometimes the frames, they look a bit cockeyed after, you know, when you really build it. It's like a lot of tweaking, a lot of shifting, but... In my case, I find ways to make things work, and I stick with them. So now, since that this is done, I do want to give a bit of a brief thing here real quick. I know some of you are wondering, what kind of collection of trucks do I have? All right. Well, we're going to go take a look. Are you guys going to come with me? And we're going to let this sit. So it's going to be good till then. Um, we just want to make sure the frame itself sits. I usually use this tape part here as a bed. So basically I just keep the frame rested there overnight. Uh, basically I let the frames kind of sit for about overnight to maybe a week. It depends um, what kind of design and idea I'm going to go with the frame. Uh, sometimes I just build them up a vintage style. Sometimes I don't. Um, so anyways, I'm going to take you guys over. <laughs> you guys are going to kind of get a little bit of a uh, collection tour of some of the trucks I built. And there might be some that you might like. So I'm going to just take you guys right over. We're just going to walk out of the workshop. I'm not going to. Um, so we're just going to. Well, we got a table saw there, but that's not what I want to show. So anyways, I'm going to show you the long history of my truck building time. And as you can tell, I have. We start off with the Renault, which I got a PMS app there. Then we go down to the tanker truck. <laughs> Which was a special order. Actually, this was the not the trailer. The trailer's vintage, but the tanker truck was uh, the rig here was a special order, courtesy of a friend of mine who used to own the hobby shop when he actually had passed away in I believe 20, 2006. And to my good boy Scott Davidson, R.I.P. Um, we miss you. And uh, so this is the truck I got from him. Here's my auto car which is a matching thing. It's a Bixby. Um, I actually made this as a Bixby cattle truck. Um, and I actually used a very nice little paint. The hood obviously doesn't open. I, it was like a, a very difficult kit to work with. You have to kind of pardon the, uh, the plastic bag here. But it's all Bixby from front all the way to the back. I matched it up the, the same color. Uh, that's basically there. Um, another auto car dumper. Well, another auto car. I turned this one to a dumper. Um, made this more of a, uh, a workhorse. I made it with, um, if you look, I actually did some raised rivets of rust, uh, a little bit of dirt in the window. You can see right there. Some 
shmag along the way, a little bit of rust on the front bar. I could take it off and show you. Um, but in the bed, I kind of made it all grungy looking. As you can tell, there's like some asphalt in there. If you can see it really well, uh, there's some asphalt, some rust in there. And I have a, well, down here are just my regular models, but um, those are not like, too important. Um, but this is my other vehicle, uh, which is actually, I can't remember what the name of this truck is. I think it was a Kenworth or no, this one's a Peterbilt. I'm sorry. This is a Peterbilt. This one I did a long time ago uh, when I was staying at my parents' house. And I guess I can show you last but not least the International Scout 2, which is done as a second, oh, kind of like a throwback to, you know, way back when. Um, so basically that's everything near for the truck tour. And of course, this is my workshop. And I want to show you something really cool um, that most people I know who don't really uh, do very much as far as like the kit goes. Um, anyways, I wanted to show you over here my arm. This is the parts the actual part box for all my truck needs. <laughs> it's kind of like a little aftermarket thing. So it's kind of, it's a little something different. Of course, my little chrome side, side, uh, side tanks, which I will, um, I may or may not use them to be continued on that one. And uh, Kanepa parts, which I actually was going to converge the truck with that, but I've been thinking about no, nah, I'm not too. I mean, it would be kind of wild if I could do it, right? But uh, it's not going to be anything there uh, and that. And last but not least, I actually started doing this one. I'm holding off because I actually want to work on the uh, Diamond Rio. I'm sorry, but the Diamond Rio is the first priority here. So this one here is the Sinclair gas truck. It's uh, the white truck with the trailer. Um, basically this is a kit I will build. Um, I actually start to paint it or I didn't really start to paint it. I just started to build it and, um, I'm actually doing this in, my, uh, in honor of my great grandfather who actually built the Sinclair gas station way back when. Um, so this is a little bit of a tribute to, this one's a special thing I'm going to be building. Um, but in tribute to my great grandfather. Uh, who passed away in 1997. Um, so actually the story was that he actually built the gas stations back then and he was an architectural uh, design. So that's a kit that's going to be solely, uh, I'm going to make a special YouTube video um, or more like a special stream on when I build this kit. Quite a few streams actually. Um, and then this truck here is going to be done uh, more of a retro Maybe retro, maybe not, but um, I actually, there's a couple of trucks here. Um, this one, especially is a memorial. Uh, that one I'm going to work on uh, really well, you know, like really nice, and hopefully um, get to that one till later, but it's going to be very, uh, kind of a very touchy thing uh, for me at that point, but uh, <laughs> that's a different story. Um, but anyways, um, I have more of the truck kits but they're not just on the shelf. They're scattered everywhere else. I have a Coca-Cola truck. I got a Tyrone Malone's um, toy hauler, which is the Big Papa truck. And I have the, the Bandit uh, as well. Um, but anyways, I want to, you know, before I go, I want to give a little thumbs up to everybody out there. Um, it was nice to see... Um, John Kloss, uh, thank you for uh, dropping on in. Uh, hopefully you check out more of my videos coming up with uh, more live, actually more live streams coming up because uh, the next one's going to be building more up onto the frame. Um, so make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And uh, you guys get more of that uh, trucky goodness content. And hopefully you guys might see me fully. Um, <laughs> Just today, I'm just, like, tired a little bit, so I don't want to, like, show my tired face up on stream. But leave that like button, leave that subscribe button, 
And also stay tuned for the next uh, upload video of the Diamond Reno truck. Um, and hopefully you guys will see more clearly where things are going to go with this truck. Um, um, like I said, sing on the fence. And um, I want to say thank you guys for watching. And uh, see you guys in the next video. I'm going to say peace and love and happiness and all that fun stuff. And no, not sugar and spice, everything nice. I don't go that far. Well, I don't go into that one. But uh, <clears throat> anyways, thanks for watching, people. And hopefully you guys will see me in the next video. Hopefully you'll see the more progression to the truck. And uh, stay tuned. Peace out.